Hello and welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow, India's only daily television platform for small businesses. Over the past seven years, we've understood what matters most to you, the entrepreneur. And in year eight, we're taking head on two of your most pressing concerns, that of funding and mentoring. I'm Sunanda Jayasilan. Two interviews in focus tonight. First up is a sit-down chat with Borusil, also bringing you what makes Sandeep Lodha Weddings.in in our special series, Valentine's Golf Retreat presents Undaunted Trades. Our first influencer conversation tonight is with Shrivar Karuka of Borosil. I spoke to this very young entrepreneur about what it means to be in the family business, to talk about uh, their multiple arms, including the laboratory business, as well as the consumer side of the business, what the way forward is looking like, expansion, etc. Take a listen. Shiva, thanks for your time here in studio with us today. Uh, talking all things Borosil, talking really about uh, what your learnings have also been. Uh, and what the journey has been like. Uh, but let's start by talking about the profiles that you handle and the business verticals that you really handle and uh, you know what you'd like to tell our viewers about Borosil. So Borosil, uh, as a group, we have two listed companies, mm -hmm. Borosil Glassworks Limited and Gujarat Borosil Limited. I handle Borosil Glassworks Limited. That's basically the consumer products division and the scientific products division mm -hmm. of the company. A consumer includes kitchen and table products and uh, scientific includes laboratory, uh, products including pharmaceutical packaging mm. and that's what my day-to-day uh, -day job is, is for the last you know 12 or 13 years that I've been with Borosil. Okay so over the past 12 or 13 years you know while you have of course been at the company you're a third generation entrepreneur and I'm sure uh, dinner table conversations around you know how the business etc has been growing would have been uh, a part of your growing up and the reason I bring this up is that we love asking young entrepreneurs like yourself uh, who are part of business families and are the second or third or fourth or fifth generation of business families, uh, how are you managing to carve a niche for yourself? What your learnings have been? How much of the legacy do you maintain? How much do you change? What has that been for you? So, you know, um, I, I went to college in the US and um, after, after that I came back and uh, I was confronted with a pretty large crisis uh, and that was we had high, uh, you know, uh, we had a very high increase of input costs. Mm. We had a high issue or a problem with uh, labor unions. Um, we could not expand our production in, in Mumbai where our facility was. So it was like being thrown into the fire literally mm. on, uh, you know, very shortly after coming back. And uh, it was all hands on deck. So we had to find ways to solve problems uh, which were innovative, mm -hmm. uh, which required out of the box thinking. And because we, even things like meeting payroll on a monthly basis was a challenge. Okay. So I think there became a lot of acceptance to new ways of doing things and not, let's call it the traditional or older ways of uh, managing the mm. business. And uh, I think that was in retrospect a blessing in disguise, okay. uh, the, the crisis that we had. Sure. And I think that was what helped, you know, coming out of the crisis, uh, you know, automatically people had a respect that yes, even though this is a third generation entrepreneur, mm. it's someone from the family, you know, uh, he's managed to get his hands dirty, he's managed to lead the company into sure. new areas. So I think that helped me uh, in retrospect to uh, make a mark or, you know, get a leadership position really in, in the business. Okay, so as a B2C company, then how are you listening to your customers? Oh, that's that's actually a good uh, question because we do it multiple ways. So mm. uh, the easiest is, you know, online. So we. Okay we make sure we look at say Amazon or you know our own website myborosil.com we go we get feedback from customers on okay. our products you know mm -hmm. reviews and whatnot we see what competition is doing mm -hmm. what good and bad feedback they're getting uh, so that's online it's easy to get access to what's working and what's not mm -hmm. uh, we also have our own marketing team that goes out and talks to customers focus group uh, studies understands what their needs are uh, we're fortunate at the moment, uh, there's a, you know, we are a glass company. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, lots of products which are uh, sustainable, uh, you know, in terms of environment, mm -hmm. as well as healthy for, uh, for people to eat and, you know, store food in. And plastic is, you know, something we know is uh, damaging to the environment. Sure. Also, not, maybe not the healthiest option to eat out of. So we have kind of a tailwind, uh, which is pushing us forward uh, on, on our offerings. And so we, we get enough input, both from end customers, from our retailers, okay. as well as from online, you know, interactions directly with, with customers. And that drives product innovation, that drives our marketing campaigns. And in general, the environment is kind of uh, moving away from plastic towards glass, and that's mm. also helping us uh, substantially. Okay. In your consumer business, is it primarily an urban audience that you're talking to? 
Uh, yeah, I would say so uh, mm. because you know people. Uh, I would say most of our sales are in the top fifty cities slash towns of sure. of India. So at the moment, it's mostly urban. Uh, although with preferences changing, we will see that an affordability coming in even yeah. in the rural areas. I, I do expect that in the next say five years, we will see more of a increase of our sales and distribution into. Uh, more rural areas of the country. Okay, so I was just going to come to that and talk about you know the affordability and the pricing. Really, yeah. if you're looking at expansion, and you're looking at uh, you know uh, uh, towns tier three, tier four, etc., mm -hmm. which is where I would assume a lot of industries really have their market. Mm -hmm. How does a company like yourself address those markets? So in the past, uh, I think one of the things uh, we changed uh, was we were a niche brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, we we sold a certain type of product mainly to SCCA type customers. Sure. You'd use our products maybe once in a week or once in a month. Yeah. And it was great quality. It performed beautifully. Mm -hmm. So the, it never broke. So you never didn't replace it. And that was one of the key uh, you know things we found that we needed to change. Not in terms of quality. Quality is still our forte. Mm -hmm. We still perform beautifully, but. We have now uh, products which encompass daily lives. So okay. our day-to-day -day daily usage products. So right from storage containers, which can be one for you know 70 rupees or 80 rupees, all the way to dinner sets, which could be two or 3,000 rupees. So we have a wide range of uh, SKUs, which cater to your daily needs, starting from 70, 80, which is fairly affordable, mm. uh, all the way to more expensive items. And that's really this product bucket expansion has allowed us to um, you know go into say tier two at least uh, markets mm. and as we go forward then that's going to help us go into tier three tier four markets as well so uh, you know the price point is very very key there okay uh, you were talking about social media previously yeah. i just want to sort of come back to that and uh, talk about what sort of branding and marketing uh, you do you don't do a lot of traditional advertising mm. uh, but uh, clearly there is a high recall when it comes at least to your consumer side of the business yeah. for borussia how do you manage that so, uh, you know, we're not a very large company mm. and uh, therefore marketing budgets also, we cannot compete with uh, much larger uh, players. Sure. So it's a little bit, uh, we have to focus on really our key customers and, uh, you know, like you mentioned, social media is a great avenue. So whether it's, a, whether it's YouTube or, you know, Facebook or Twitter, uh, Instagram, we're all there. Uh, and that uh, we've got a very large you know, following there and we keep updating that following with great content, contests and so on, okay. uh, where we get engagement. Bloggers are a big uh, role to play in this, you know, uh, there's a lot of following on recipes and that kind of stuff, which, uh, which people have on, mm. again, on YouTube. Um, Amazon, Amazon, you know, uh, they have a lot of marketing uh, kind of campaigns that uh, they run and we can, we piggyback on them as well to sell products on Amazon. Uh, so Amazon's becoming a big, uh, you know, percentage of our revenues as okay. well. When I say Amazon, I'm including Flipkart and uh, sure. okay. the other uh, online e-com mm. uh, players. So I, I believe that uh, social media slash, you know, the whole digitalization of, mm. of uh, our country is uh, giving access to every customer the whole range of products. Uh, okay. Whereas in a shop, you can only store maybe, or the shopkeeper or the retailer would have maybe 20, 30 of our products. We have actually more than a thousand SKUs. So online, you can have all of them listed and uh, you really can have a much wider uh, you know, variety to choose from. So we spend a fair bit of money online uh, in all these, on all these you know, channels or uh, you know, media that I've mentioned uh, to, to help people recall our, our brand. Okay, uh, as I'm closing this interview down, can you talk to us about uh, where really is the opportunity in, in the industries that you're in? You can talk both about the consumer business as well as you know the laboratory business that you're in. Yeah. I do understand you're looking at investing a significant amount of money uh, yeah. as far as your uh, plant and machinery and R&D is concerned. You know, so what really is the outlook then? So our vision in the, you know, is to be the most customer-centric company in India. Okay. And uh, what that means is we mm. really need to understand the needs of our customers. Mm. So in on the consumer space, I believe that customers are looking for sustainable options uh, in terms of environmentally sustainable, mm. healthy options to you know eat out of, to drink uh, out of, to store food in. And our focus is going to be to uh, drive those options. It could be in glass, it could be in steel, it could be in various different materials. But the idea is to give customers choices which are healthy as well as environmentally sustainable, uh, also have great design. Um, kids, you know, the whole area of kids uh, products, uh, this is also important and we've been, we're going to be launching products in the area for, for school going children, okay. you know, their lunch boxes, their, their water bottles and stuff like that. Sure. 
Um, on the scientific side, again, mm. being customer centric, uh, we find there's a lot of uh, imports happening into the country uh, for instruments. So we've set up a unit in Pune, mm. which is mainly meant to do import substitution of uh, instru laboratory instrumentation. Okay. And I believe uh, if we can send, uh, you know, the rover to Mars mm. uh, or to the moon, Chandrayaan and Mangalayaan, why can't we make, uh, you know, a laboratory instrument? And mm. uh, I think we have the engineering capability to do that. And we will be, uh, you know, adding to that uh, area. So idea is to give our customers a wider choice in both uh, scientific as well as on the consumer side, really what they need at an affordable price point. Sure. I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thanks so much for your time, Shrivar. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break on that note. When we come back, weddings.in in focus. Do stay tuned. Welcome back. You're with us here on Leaders of Tomorrow in our special series, Valentine's Golf Retreat presents Undaunted Crates. Weddings in India are no longer small family-based affairs, but now multimedia, multi-stage, multi-destination, multi-location affairs. That is the opportunity being tapped into by businesses like Weddings.in. And I caught up with Sandeep Loda, an entrepreneur who says that he ventured into this because of his personal experiences, went on from there to be acquired by Oyo last year. I spoke to him about that experience, about his journey and his advice for others watching this interview. Take a listen. Good having you joining us here in studio, uh, talking really about uh, your inspirations and uh, you know your inspiration in your successes that you've seen as an entrepreneur. So my first question really is that: uh, at what point, and did you have perhaps one one sort of aha moment when you said, "I want to turn entrepreneur"? What was that journey like for you? And uh, also, what have the learnings been? There was. Hmm. It was. It is 2014. I was at my cousin's wedding. And I realized but when I got married 15 years ago to my cousin's wedding, nothing had changed. Mm. For the rich and famous, there are wedding planners. But for middle class customers, they are at the mercy of listing websites where they can find the venues and vendors, right? But there was no branded offering per se, you know, no platform to really help you, you know, find the venues and vendors, good venues and vendors. Sure. And then take guarantee of the service. This was the aha moment for us is can I tap into that market, help the middle class, the upper middle class, find good venues and vendors and give them a hassle-free experience. That led to wedding starting. Okay. Uh, the wedding market in India is massive and, you know, everyone talks about the kind of figures uh, that uh, and, you know, the kind of growth figures really for this market. My question is... Uh, why is it perhaps still so unorganized? Sitting where you are, sitting in the organized market, what perhaps are those biggest uh, you know, challenges that you're really seeing in the wedding industry? And you're absolutely right. It is very unorganized, but it is the same across the world. Okay. Across the world, wedding market is very local. The venues and the vendor base is very fragmented. Every city will have its own set of decorators, caterers, photographers, makeup artists, and venues. Okay. We saw this opportunity, and that is the opportunity we saw, mm -hmm. that there were no branded you know, services, uh, no large player in this market. Mm -hmm. And that is what led to us getting into the market, saying, can we offer a branded you know, venue, uh, you know, branded photography, branded makeup? Can we offer a full package of hassle-free experience, both booking and a great event to the customer? Okay. And this is what is what we are doing right now. Okay. So I started with this conversation by asking you what your biggest learnings have been. Uh, you know, working so closely then with what is essentially an unorganized, uh, very fragmented market, uh, was that your biggest learning? And, you know, what sort of advice could you give someone who's watching this interview about what it has been for you? One of the big learnings for me is as you start any entrepreneur starting their journey, you have to get the right team in place, right team that believes in this thing mm. and will stick with you through the end. Sure. You will, of course, find people who are looking for jobs, 
but if they don't believe in it, mm. you will fail. Mm. So for us, is getting the right people on board initially, who stuck with me throughout the whole journey, has been a great, great, you know, uh, fact for our success so far. Okay, fair enough. But I want to, at this point, you know, take a step back and talk about your model as well. Uh, you're someone who, within a very short period of having been set up, has been acquired by none other than Oyo. Uh, if you can break down the USP really of your of your business and talk to our viewers about how you fine-tuned and you know how you decided that that was going to be the USP of your business. How did that come about? So look, there are a lot of you know players in India and mm. globally mm. doing listings. Mm. Listings meaning you know they have a list of venues, they have a list of vendors mm. and one can go and find the venues and vendors. But like I explained to you earlier as well, we wanted to provide a great service. We wanted to provide curated vendors, curated venues to our customers, and then stick behind and make sure they have a great experience. That was not available. Today, we are not a marketplace, we are not curated vendors. We sure. are a full stack model, which means we manage venues, hmm. we manage artists. So anybody who comes to us, we provide them our venues and our artists. Hmm. So we are essentially saying, you know, here are our venues that we manage, and here is our photographers that we manage. We give them a full, full experience and the experience is in our control. Mm. The customer experience is in our control and no one provides this service mm. across across the globe. Mm. So we are the only one with this model across India, across globe. Uh, which is a very asset heavy model though, and but that has clearly been working for you. For someone watching this interview, would you perhaps say that this is the best way to go about it? Because everyone is talking asset light all the yeah. time. Mm. In a way, we are asset light as well, I okay. must guide you because we, while we take control of the of the venue and, and the artist, mm. a lot of operations and and investments are taken by the owner. Okay. Right. So it is an asset light model, but allows you to give you the experience to the customer that you want. Sure. Allows you to manage the experience. So when a customer comes to us, we provide them our list of venues. And then my guy at the venue will manage the whole customer experience end to end, right? Mm. During the booking time at the event time. Mm. We make sure that whatever we have committed to the customer, we will deliver. Sure. The delivery will happen via the operator, mm. but we will ensure that. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, I must tell you, we are at 99% happy customers. Mm. Of course, you know, as we get into December, we will have approximately 20,000 events happen at our venue, 20,000. Okay. We, are, we are aspiring to get to 99.99% .99 happy customers. Okay, um, I was asking you about the acquisition by uh, you know, OYO, how did you prepare for that? You know, what should a founder who perhaps is looking at whether it's an acquisition, merger, et cetera, by a, a larger peer, uh, what should they put in mind? What has that experience been like for you? So look, for us, we were not uh, looking out for an acquisition. We were doing fairly well. Hmm. Um, OYO had also entered the banqueting space. Sure. Uh, so there were competition to us in some markets. Uh, they came to us with a proposal. Hmm. Many others, uh, many others also came to us for a proposal. I always advise entrepreneurs to look at those proposals and see if it makes sense. Sure. For me at the time, it made sense. The Whatever was offered made sense to us. And we were getting a large platform uh, to really scale this up. There were a lot of synergies we got via OYO. OYO gets hotels with banquets, so sure. we we're getting a lot of good supply. Sure. They had access to a lot of corporate customers. We got access to that. So apart from you know the, the synergies, the proposal was also right, mm. and we accepted it. Mm. So since the OYO acquisition, look, before you know, around the OYO acquisition, we were two cities. We were around 100 venues. Uh, we were now 30 plus cities. We are, you know, around 800 venues, mm. and we have grown 480 percent since then. Mm. So the acquisition has clearly, you know, added a lot of value to the brand and sure. the company. Okay, so that's a massive figure, you know, close to 500 percent growth. Where are those opportunities really for someone watching this interview to say, you know, like you're saying, it's a crowded market, it's a fragmented market. Um, where are the opportunities as you see it? The opportunities are everywhere. Today okay. we are very big in, in even in cities like Indore and Bhopal. Okay. You know, everybody now wants to have a great experience, wouldn't you? I mean, wouldn't you want to get your wedding done at you know with a brand? Mm. At least you have the guarantee of a great event. If a brand can guarantee you that, wouldn't you want to do that? Mm. I think all middle class wants that, and that's mm. what we're offering in all small towns as now, right? We are now in cities like I said, Indore, Bhopal. You know, so everywhere we are finding these opportunities, okay. and our expansion plan is to continue doing that. Sure. Uh, 
My uh, last two questions then, first and foremost, is uh, what next for you? Uh, you know, everyone perhaps is talking about uh, customization of weddings, destination weddings, etc. I don't know if I'm behind the curve when I'm coming to some of these trends and themes, but what next for you? How do you ensure that you're staying on top of these trends? How are you innovating and, you know, holding your own in this market? So, multiple ways, I, you're right. There, are, there is a trend in the market of destination wedding. Mm. We are seeing a lot of our customers look for Goa, Udaipur, Jodhpur, Jaipur and we are expanding aggressively there. We run 40 venues in Goa, we run similar number in Udaipur and Jaipur. We are providing with our customers one package, saying everything included, here is a price, and that is working well for us. Today, in Goa, we are already doing 10% of destination weddings in Goa. Mm -hmm. So some of these uh, numbers are, very, are very, lo looking very attractive to us, so we are absolutely at the, at the, at the, at the right place, mm -hmm. providing customers these destination wedding, uh, wedding, uh, weddings to our customers, and we are doing that, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at other trends, what we are seeing is two main trends. The, the number of guests at, the, at every uh, wedding is dropping okay. slow, slowly and steadily, but the number of functions is increasing. Okay. So they want to have a reception, a, you know, a sangeet, a mehendi, a bachelor party, a bachelorette party. So all these things are happening, right? So what we are seeing is one hand, the number of guests are decreasing, mm. but on the other hand, number of functions are increasing, right? And we are absolutely benefiting from that because we are essentially a venue company. Sure. We are a venue company, and you know we have 800 plus venues, you know, growing aggressively. So we are absolutely at that right place where we are tapping into the the growth that's happening. All right. Wish you all the very best. Thanks for coming down to our studio. Thank you. Thanks, Adi. Our contact details are coming up on your screens in just a moment. Do let us know what you thought of both the interviews tonight, and also if you have any feedback on any of the other shows. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good night.